Good afternoon, everybody. Welcome to The Handmaidens. Hey, if it's your first time stopping in, I'm glad to see you. Great. I'm glad you found us. We're buried in the middle of billions and billions of other YouTubers. So you stick around because we got a really good show. And if you're coming back, you know, as always, it's good to see you again. So today, uh, today is actually St. Nicholas Day. Yep. And we were going to get our tree today, but it's raining. December 6th and it's raining. Um, so we're going to do that someday when it's not raining this week. This is the latest we've ever, we've ever went for putting up a tree, but that's okay because it gives me time to make some ornaments. And today we're going to make witch balls. Which balls? These balls. Which balls? W I T C H. Uh, you know what you're thinking? You are thinking that witch balls are for Halloween. Well, they're not just for Halloween. They happen to be very. I'm getting my antennas caught in a nest above me. I've got a birdhouse here that has to come down it because it's hitting me in the head. Thank you. All right. Bye bye, birdhouse. Alrighty, so there, now my antennas are free to do whatever they're doing. Um, so anyhow, here's some witch balls that I've made in the past over here. Let me show you. There we go. And uh, they've been hanging around for a while, so harden the dust, that happens. Um, these babies are filled with all different kinds of natural ingredients, and I'm going to go over what they are and how you can make them and why you might want to okay because we all know that the new oh cottage core and witch core and, and forest cores or core is all the rage and farmhouse and cozy living and and things like that and and they kind of focus all on one thing in common and that is uh nature um as you know at Christmas time or the solstice or the Yuletide or or any of the winter celebrations we have something called a Christmas tree and you don't get more natural than that and we like to hang things on that so where where did it all begin well witch balls which were way back in the you know 16 1700s I guess um, they were found in England homes, um, hung over, man, hung from mantelpieces, over the windows, over the doorways, as a way to ward off evil spirits. Okay, so they were. The idea was that evil spirits liked really shiny things, and they would take these glass balls and paint them with shiny stuff or put shiny things on the inside it, to attract them in the hopes that the evil spirits would come in, get tangled up, and not be able to get out. We're trapping them, so to speak, I guess. I don't know. Liking Chinese things is, a, is, you know, some people do, so I don't know. But I think it was during the time when there was just so much fear, there were plagues, there were all these things happening. And uh, it was also during a time period that, uh, you know, we had these nasty, awful, horrific witch hunts going on throughout Europe and even in the United States and Massachusetts, as you know, the famous Salem witch trials, in which they took people that, maybe mainly women, not exclusively, but people that may have used some old country, ways, folk healing, this and that. Maybe not. It's just, may have just been random. Maybe anybody that they thought threatened the church and the church's power at that time. They were kind of hunted down and, and in this country hung. And I, I don't know. They were tortured in different ways. Whether they were ever burned some places perhaps. But in Europe, quite a few people, you know, uh, succumbed to that. Were they witches? Later on, they say no, and the whole thing ends when they say, well, there's no such thing as witches, so don't even worry about it. Today, in modern day, a lot of people ascribe to different sorts of nature 
religion, so they may, probably not. Some may be ancestors of the, those people. Um, but the one thing we know for sure is that Christmas time and all that has a sense of magic. And uh, we want to think of the good things. The idea that the witch ball was the ancestor to the Christmas ornament or bauble is uh, debated. But they came from Germany, where you have those evergreen trees, um, in the 1800s sometimes. So I'm like, well, which came first? The witch ball or the bauble? I'm saying these are the great granddaddies and mommies of those ornaments. But I'm not um, a historian or research person in that, in that stuff. I'm just kind of interested because mainly because they are... So beautiful, you know, look at that, gorgeous, gorgeous. That really needs a good Windex. Anyhow, so we're going to make some today. And what you start with is you can buy these at a craft store. Now, these are something I don't like uh, because they're made of, look at that, why do I have double boxes? That's, oh, goodness, anyhow. Must be an old box. I put it in a new box. These guys are made out of plastic. They're nice because if you're making this for somebody at a distance, you want to send that away. It's going to travel and package and go very well. If the cat gets in the tree and they're on the tree and it goes ding, it bounces. That's nice. The first witch bowl I'd ever received as a gift uh, from somebody who made me one, they were glass. And uh, my daughter's got some, and they had, um, they had, over time, all of us ended up with a hole blown in them, a round circle hole in the side. And I'm like, is that the evil spirit trying to escape, or had it done its thing, and that said, boom, we're, you know, it's done, it's good, it's transmuted. Negative energy turned into positive energy because of all the beautiful things inside. I don't know. But here I have these little babies. How oh, cute are they? Any weenies. Real glass. As I prefer. And my favorites of all times are... These teardrops, shapes, or whatever, I don't know what you would call them, icicle shapes. These beautiful guys, like I have in this one, is um, glass, real glass. And when they're brand new, when you just did them, and they haven't been in my house for a few years, soaking up the dust and the smoke and the soot, they are spectacular to look at. So... What do we put in? Well, number one, we're going to put in natural ingredients. You're going to know some of these ingredients from my other uh, videos, cooking videos, because some of the same things I cook with, I decorate with. We're going to take these little guys out. We're going to save them for later. And later on, we're going to cover them with some twine with our good old handy glue gun. And Hopefully you're better at the glue gun than I am. I've set them in glasses here. They're nice old vintage glasses. So that I can do more than one at a time. You can do just one. You can do a hundred. You can do whatever you want. Because that's, that's what I want you to do. And I want you to tell me what you did. I want you to tell me what you put in yours. It is limitless what you can fill these with. I know there's... Lots of YouTube videos out there of things you can do with these ornaments and things you can put in them, and, and it goes on and on and on and on. So, um, some of the things I have is I have some, some white sage, which I do grow myself, and I dry it out myself, and you know, you can put in however many pieces you want. I like to think of three as a magic number, and I'm trying to make something magical for the holidays, right? Whenever. These make great uh, gifts for uh, people 
moving into a house, a house blessing, and they're great to hang over the baby's bassinet, providing they, you know, they're not going to fall down and smack baby. You <laughs> want, but they're nice and shiny to look at. Um, and uh, hey, for protection and stuff, you just put it away someplace that's safe. Be smart, people. Um, three, one, two, three. You don't have to use white sage. Some people won't use white sage because they they are not. Uh, uh, they feel that that is. Um, uh, you know, like appropriation of somebody else's culture. Two, three. I am so multicultural. It's almost a phenomenal. It's phenomenal, right? I don't. I don't know what what all the places I know. Poland celebrates. Uh, St. Nick's Day. Um, I don't know. Is there any other countries that that's real common in? Let me know. Let me know if you celebrate St. Nick's Day. I know somebody that has, uh, uh, you know, grandparents from Poland that, would, that has done some, you know, follows a tradition. So let me know. I want to know about your traditions. I'm all about tradition and I'm all about new things. Now, here's something I like to put in them. If it's Christmas time, mind you, I make these for all time, springtime, Christmas time, autumn, summer, mm, but it's not, it's the most wonderful time of the year. I wish I could have that playing in the background, but I don't know how to do certain YouTube music without getting caught for copyright. Look at that. We just drop, break a piece off. Think of something, oh, wonderful thoughts. You know, cinnamon represents prosperity, and love, and, and, and protection, okay? A little bit of cinnamon in each one. You don't have to make yours look the same. You can get them looking very different. Hmm. I thought I had another one. Oh, well, that one's too tough, huh? And there we go. So there's some cinnamon. What else could we put in our our wonderful? Well, we're trying to keep out the evil eye. We're trying to keep out evil spirits. And we're trying to fill our houses with good fortune. Our homes are the homes of those we love. So we know one of the great things that we use for protection and food and other things are clothes. Mm, what I'd like to do is make uh, stick some of these in an orange and with a ribbon. How nice is that? Have you thought of changing, switching over from all that store bought stuff? Now, mind you, I bought these in the store. Mm -hmm. um, but uh, and making a more natural Christmas. Remember popcorn and cranberries and orange slices and apple slices and gingerbread men. And Salt all ornaments and, you know, all those great things. I used to have, when I was little, we had a cone. Beautiful cones that had like a popcorn bowl or something to sit in it. That's, uh, but I'm old. Old as, old as time. And there we go. I'll put some of these in. They taste so good. They're so good for cloves or clove oil. is good for your the toothache, right? You know that. Oh. Smells so good. You can make a nice simmering pot on the stove while you're doing making your Christmas crafts. While you have some Christmas music that you don't have to pay royalties to because I don't know how to do that. I wish I had Christmas music. It would make me, my voice be a lot more appealing, I think, with a little, you know, little jingle bells behind me. Okay, so we got some of that in here. Now, what else? One thing I do like to do is represent the elements, okay? And by that I do, uh, let's say something from earth. I'm representing earth, which I like to, I use salt. We are the salt of the earth, right? And I take some Himalayan pink salt crystals. If you wanna do a, a pink colored theme thing, you kind of, you know, go and Focus on things that are that color, flowers and rosebuds, and you can put 
throw his quartz in there. And I put some salt to represent earth. These are looking pretty identical. We're going to have to switch them up in a little bit. Okay. And earth. And then... Let's see. Let's do something to represent air and wind. How about a feather? Feathers are good for that. I like to have a jar of feathers. But what? No, oh, that's a nice. That's too much. But we should make one purple one. How's that? Put a purple feather in one of these. I should have told you to grab a chopstick or something for smushing these things down in if you need to. Um, so, get in there, Feather. Once they go in there, they pounce around and do their own, oh, oh, I'm back, do their own thing. And we put some representing air in there, wind, and angels, you know, angels are in the air and sorts of things, and... Now, if you were going to do an all, all kind of a pinky one, you could put that in there, right? Somebody was says pink Christmases are in. I like the new neutral tones myself. And I don't have a lot of neutral ornaments, so I'm going to have to do something about that. These look lovely with any kind of ornament. They're just, just beautiful. Many, 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 many of these over time. Um, so, yeah, put some feathers and some feathers right here. Let's see. A big feather. Right? Can we? Could we? Let's try. Let's not give up yet. Let's see if we can't get him in. You get in there. Get in there, wind, air. In there. He's so big, but he's gonna make it. He's gonna do it. Swing a little swirl. Okay, so what do we have? We have earth, we got wind, we have, let's see, we have oh, water. I know what we could do for water. We could get a little something from the sea. I've got these teeny tiny seashells. Oh, I got some pink ones for the pink ones. Let me put that in first. <coughs> Excuse me. Tis the season. Yep, that old thing's back. Uh, COVID's back. Flu is back. Maybe I needed my baubles hanging, right? And put a seashell to represent water. And water, and water, we honor the elements, and we're thankful for them, for without air, and water, and earth, we could not survive, so it's a big deal. Fire, man-made invention, I don't have any fire here, what I would recommend is to use Maybe a piece of incense. I didn't bring anything out here particularly, but let's use some, um, uh, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. you know, maybe we could use cinnamon actually represents fire. That's a hot, hot thing. But we could put some pepper. We got any pepper? Let's represent some fire. Is it some pepper? Put our little funnel and in here. We're gonna put some a little bit. There we go. For our fire. There we go. Just enough. Yep. And we'll put some, which is also good. Protection. Oops, right on the outside. Should I do on the outside? I know. I can be the messiest crafter in the world. And that will look real pretty. If you had used those traditional colors of red and green and white. And I'm not gonna uh, yeah, just a smidge. Really, you have 
have everything you need to make these. You might not have the balls, but you probably have <sighs> got the balls. Uh, but you might not have uh, the uh, got the ingredients. You might need to get these little guys to make them. Okay. Um, now let's see. Let's get going with some of the some of the more prettier things. We had. Do we have a purple one? Here we got some beautiful lavender. It'll look lovely in there. There's my funnel. Listen. Mmm, fresh lavender. How pretty is that? Let's put some lavender in that one. Just cross so I can get it out of the thing. I guess it's not coming out. Put it back in there. All right. What else can we do? Here we got a, uh, while we have it out, I get going and I really never know exactly where I'm going to go. Now these are things I like. I'm obsessed with these. Something I do buy. Besides throwing my own herbs, I buy bags of potpourri all the time because it's just, they're just the prettiest. So, mmm. They smell good to, they smell nice to work with. Look at that, look how that's coming along. How pretty for the purple lover in your life, right? And maybe these seed pods, seed pods, not seed pods, seed pods, and what else do they have in there? That's a little on the pink side. We'll give that to the pink guy over here. And yep. A little more of this in there. So pretty. You don't have to fill them to the top. You just do what feels right. The one thing I don't have here that I like to do is I like to uh, grab a book, an old book with old writing, and I like to cut out special magical words and then I put them inside you really can't see the word sometimes until you're just really gazing in there deeply and and what happens is I like to uh, have if I'm giving them to somebody I kind of concentrate on them and pick that out or let them pick out their own and my guess is that whatever Whatever sort of word, good only good words. I don't put bad words. Only good words. Um, was meant for them. Something that they need or they're going to receive in the future. Look at that. We're getting a little bit of the greens in here and make it nice, natural look. These are gorgeous. We're going to um, also add a little bit of. A little bit of moss. How's that? And I'll, I'll go off camera and I'll make up these and then we'll get back on when we start putting the rope and the, uh, the other thing I like to add are these charms. Like we had charms around the for an extra touch. So here we go. That's, that's just gorgeous. And let's see what we have here. Look at that green guy. Here's some nice piece of moss. Put him in there. And probably, probably should take, should watch this go in because this is really, really what it's really, really the fun stuff. Let's see. Let's take that one here. Put one in my, oh, we got some, you know what? I got some sea glass. That's nice. A little bit of sea glass in there green guy. I bought this from a child's craft display. They were selling crafts on the side of the road and I thought that was marvelous. And I'll have to think of, they're really in there good. So we got some sea glass in there. But this is where some of us are going to park friends. And this is where I'm going to make friends with some others. Because there's nothing like a little bit of 
bit of glitter. Right? How about that? We're going to put other things in there. But I love me some glitter. It looks like snow. Oh, we can't have enough of glitter. Yes. Now, there are people that hate glitter. Don't add glitter to yours. Do only what brings up good feelings, right? I promise I won't send you one with glitter. <laughs> I put some gold glitter in some of these. We're prosperity. All that glitters is not gold, but we want to catch those guys flying around, those little evil, evil critters, nymphs and pixies and all that that are up to no good. And add what color should we put in? A little bit of very royal, let's put just a touch of glitter in there. You know what you can do, you know, is um, because this was the whole idea, remember? We're going to catch these guys. If you got any sorts of tinsel, this was what they were doing. They were putting probably tinsel to catch them so they get all tangled up in there and Um, they couldn't escape. They get so mesmerized looking at the reflection. Sort of that, probably that narcissist sort of idea. Staring at them. I remember staring at ornaments when I was a little girl on the tree. We had great big white pines. And I would lay in a chair and stare at them for hours, I swear. Days. And we'd have some with little teeny tiny Christmas trees in them. And I would go and, um, you know, here, do you hear Jingle Bells? Yeah, you know who that is. That's Jack. Mondo just moved him because he was snoring. <laughs> He's snoring. Anyhow, it's not so easy to get in. I should have brought a thing. I'll go get one. But, push them in just like, they'll go in just like the feathers and they'll still you wiggle them around and then they fill up the space and they look like how did all that get in there you can do it and this is how you that's how you catch them people that's how you catch those guys those evil spirits if you have any flying around okay so we're we're gonna I'm gonna go off I'm gonna make these and we'll come back and we'll start putting the tops on okay so hold on a minute Stop. Okay, so we're back and uh, I filled all the rest of the ornaments with some other goodies. Here's one I finished completely. Purple one. And if you see, I've got a um, butterfly on there. I've got some jute around, jute twine. Um, and it's just, can you imagine that? on the tree with a Twinkie light behind it. How oh, beautiful is that? Okay. I'm going to have a hard time giving that one away. So let's see. We Let me show you what I did. I took, filled up. I used other stuff when I was, you know, it's hard to do these videos because in the moment I'm using my own inspiration and I'm running around and and one thing you can't notice, how do I get rid of the end of the string? Did I really do that? Is that possible? There is no end, it's infinity. Uh, there it is, guess not. So, um, we'll take this little do jab, how beautiful. And uh, I put some other things in like fennel, I put some coffee beans in, whole beans, I put some uh, pieces of star anise. I put some seed pods, some seeds, all little lots of pine cone things. You name it, you can get it. Find it out there in nature. Don't go buying this stuff just because I have a possession with some potpourri. Go get it. Go out there and find it. Some old, dry out some mushrooms, dry some fruits, some oranges, and all sorts of things. So, anyhow, twine. I buy that by the boatload too because I don't know. I've got like an addiction to this stuff. I just love the look of the texture. 
And thoughts of days gone by when, you know, brown paper packages tied up in string. These are a few of my favorite things. Okay, so and take the hot glue gun. You can use the little guy. Don't you don't need the big mamma jam. I just grabbed this one. This you can use the little one. And put a dab. You can use a little dab. I used a big dab. This is how I get myself in trouble. You're probably a much neater, more precise crafter than I am. I'm not number one, I don't have my glasses on, so I can't see. I have to do this by feeling and memory. So I'm just putting a little bit on and I'm twisting around that top. Helps secure the top from popping out because we don't want that spirit getting out. You know what I mean? We want to lock him in there. He's going to slide in through the little hole here and then he's going to get all tangled up. The bad energy in the strings. There's a piece of tinsel in there. And there you go. Your house is going to be like, whoa, it's feeling so peaceful in here. But actually it's going to be just a beautiful feel a lot less melancholy and a whole lot more holly jolly right less melancholy more holly jolly it's a it's a tough time of the year for many people so if you can find something that makes you feel better you know you don't have to feel better by all means there's sometimes it's just not called for but let me tell you what if if you're going to try something different, I'm going to try putting my without. Usually, I take it off, finish, and then put a whole nother piece of, of twine for the charm. I'm going to try to see if I can't just get it continued on in this piece and just take a snip off. I'm going to end it. Um, yeah, you know, so you don't have to feel great around the holidays. You got every right to feel sad if you want, but if you want to feel better. Often is the case, doing, creating something makes makes us feel better. Shopping sometimes stresses us out and makes us feel worse. But getting involved in a, in a, I open a jump ring with my fingers. You really, if you take two pliers and go one one way, one the other, makes it easier. I had it out of the craft room with my pliers and managed to lose them on the way. So I got a nice tree of life charm. I love the tree of life. I love all trees. Anyhow, so if you're doing your own crafts or making your own gifts, number one, huh, the whole exercise, you know, like art therapy is good for you. It will, it will help kind of relieve the sort of things you might be feeling um, that aren't what you want to feel this time of year. You want to go back and, and, and maybe the act of making something for someone you love kind of helps get you out of it and maybe not maybe maybe it'll take a year or two to get back to yourself if you're if you're going through a tough time it's okay that's okay life goes on we hope we pray and I did that and made sort of a big put a big glob on there once it dries you can take all the little spray pieces off okay and I'm going to just push that in there, clip off that excess right there. Put another dab of do, dab of do. Remember Gypsy Do? Anybody old enough to remember that? The hair stuff? Anyhow, so <clears throat> there you have it. That'll all dry. Try and keep your fingers out of it. Set that there. Take another piece of string, whatever. You can do varied lengths if you want to hang them like like from, um, you know, over your mantle or, or over your windows. You go short, long, short, long, and you can hang them with, with shiny ribbon or however. They're just beautiful everywhere, everywhere and anywhere. What makes them so good is they are made from nature. And, and you know, the creator, this is the best artist we've got. No, no, uh, no manufacturer can quite copy what's done in nature. And you can do this, you know, if you don't want to have an evergreen tree and you don't want to put it in your windows, you could take a nice uh, big branch from a regular tree. I did this at a craft show. 
and you could spray that with like white you know or, or, or keep it natural or you could put some glitter on there to look like snow and maybe you want to hang these ornaments off of that maybe you want to see that beautiful maybe you want to get some old photographs and make ornaments of your family and your ancestors and hang them with your natural ornaments along with dried fruits and oranges and popcorn and cranberries and gingerbread men and have yourself an all natural beautiful holiday whatever it is i hope your holiday is happy and festive and uh surrounded with people you love and if not go find some people to love here you go and enjoy tell me if you're going to make this tell me if you're going to try this make some witch balls put some beautiful positive energy in your home or give it away take care until next time friends don't forget to if you like it hit like subscribe thumbs up hit the bell for notifications we'd love to have you part of our growing family okay you take care bye-bye